Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Pittsburgh uh, Land Bank Board of Directors meeting for Friday, April 12, 2019. The first order of business is the roll call. Will the administrator please call the roll? Reverend Burgess? Here. Dr. Bay? Here. Paul Legger? Here. Diamante Walker? Here. Senator Fontana? Here. Councilwoman Kale Smith? Councilman Lavelle? Here. Steve Mazza? Wanda Wilson? You have seven members, you have a quorum. All right, I, I, I uh, want to welcome uh, Wanda Wilson as our newest board member. We are excited to have your presence and expertise um, on the board, and we are just, uh, we're excited to have you. So welcome, is there any opening remarks you wanna say before we? No, I'm happy to be here, thank you. All right, good to have you. All right, so that goes to our public comment. Members of the public that want to address the land bank, please come forward. You'll be given three minutes. Start off with your name and um, either your address or the community which you reside in. The green light means the beginning of three minutes. The yellow light means you have one minute to summarize. The red light means your time has expired. Please relinquish the podium. First speaker, please. Hello, Nancy Reese, The Hill CDC. I just wanted to offer a few comments um, as you go forward with the land bank policies and procedures. And I just wanted to offer um, some feedback as you go forward and concerns of ours um, with the current structure set up for the property reserve submission. So my first suggestion and ask you to consider would be um, confirmation of applications received. Um, other than just one single entity, perhaps a suggestion that um, organizations like ours who do large submissions at a time, um, tech technology sometimes doesn't cooperate, but my suggestion would be to have um, a third party or perhaps two separate entities confirming um, submissions for the applications, whether they're um, electronic or uh, hard copy or both. Um, my other suggestion would be to um, suggest more turnaround time, um, especially for some organizations like ours who do perhaps 29 property submissions at a time, um, instead of maybe five business days, more time to do that so we could prepare a, um, a more uh, comprehensive application. And my third, no surprise, would be to um, shorten the application. Um, for example, there's um, as you guys know, four different places to list your address on the current application for the reserve. So um, highly suggest we might be able to shorten that a bit and perhaps even have um, one or two pages be um, already a template, uh, perhaps that we could um, already submit the template of the first two pages. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Joe Wingenfeld. I'm the program manager for the community group Uptown Partners. Um, first off, I want to thank you all for the great work you have done with getting the land bank off the ground and the acquisition of the first property, working with community groups to start acquiring properties to the August treasure sale and beginning discussions about modernizing the property reserve. Um, but I would like to really encourage you to start um, working to scale and doing your work in earnest. Um, I feel like we're at a crossroads at this city where there is still a significant amount of blight um, and tax delinquent property um, that a land bank can acquire at scale. Yet time seems to be running out with a rapid rise in market interest and speculation. Um, and if the land bank doesn't act quickly, we could lose this point in time, this opportunity to acquire lots of properties that can be used to build communities and for affordable housing. Um, this was recently given the light. The need for affordable housing was very apparent with the 20,000 gap in units that are needed to create affordable housing. And there are many good examples of cities nearby that have used land banks to create lots of affordable housing. For instance, um, Columbus just passed a $4 million pilot project to reduce home sales through the land bank. Cleveland with the Cuyahoga, the Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga County land bank recently passed $30 million to do affordable housing. Um, Philadelphia has consolidated all of their land sales through the land bank. 
Um, and Cincinnati also utilizes their land bank for lots of affordable housing projects. So I just want to continue to encourage you guys to uh, continue doing the great work you're doing and to really push for the expansion of the land bank quickly because I think we are at a critical junction in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joanna Deming. I'm executive director for Fineview and Perry Hilltop Citizens Council. And I'm here because I just wanted to um, congratulate you, A, on the fact we have a land bank, and B, you've acquired a property, yay. Um, but <laughs> really just here to encourage, um, again, kind of reiterate what other people have talked about, the urgency and the need. Um, we've been anxious to um, find ways that we can work more robustly with the land bank as a tool to hopefully get a hold of property quicker than the land reserve process because two to three years is just, I mean, in two to three years, we may not have property <laughs> that we can work with because as more and more people are speculating and buying up property, it's just, really makes it difficult. I think it maybe it worked when Pittsburgh was a weaker market, but as we get hotter, it's really um, going to create a more and more of a problem and we're going to lose a lot of affordability. So we feel like the time is now we need. We also wanted to come. I also wanted to come to encourage the city to dedicate more resources to this. It needs to be a priority. I recognize, you know, you can't you can only do as much as you can do as much as you've been endowed to do. So um, encouraging the city if this is a priority to really step up in a robust way to make it effective and um, help community groups like ours and others that are looking to expand affordable opportunities and maintain them um, to make that a possibility. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, if there's ways that we can be supportive, please let us know and be happy to help. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Chris Samming. I'm the Director of Policy for the Pittsburgh Community Reinvestment Group. I am also a Morningside resident. Um, thank you all for the work that you have done um, getting land bank legislation through to the point we are today, as you heard today about uh, finally transacting land. It's really great to see this from an organizational perspective and as an individual. PCRG has been working on this issue of land recycling for over two decades now. Um, we were one of the ones who pushed for the vacant property reserve. Uh, we jointly manage it with the city. And you know, as such, we get to see firsthand what's happening when uh, properties go through this in a right way and when they get bought out from underneath our members in the wrong way. Um, and so from that perspective, I think what's really important for us is, again, to reiterate the need, I think, for this to be something that is um, more resourced going forward. Um, we have a tremendous need to take more properties at scale. Lots of work has been done about how many of those that we have. We have, mem we have at least one member now who has chosen if, if, if there is a, um, a liability of $40,000 or less on a property, for example, in their neighborhood to not even use the property reserve because they feel that that barrier is low enough that someone will buy it out from underneath them. In addition to that, uh, we look forward to uh, discussions about as the property reserve becomes more of a function of the land bank, ways that that happens and ways that community groups can participate in that and how community needs and gentrification mitigation can be dealt with through the land bank process versus the treasurer's sale. Um, our members, those who practice in land recycling, who come to the table that we facilitate on behalf of the city with the property reserve, have a wealth of experience, both good and bad, about what works and what doesn't. We look forward to that discussion. You heard about the timelines. I would say that what we've been hearing here in terms of two to three years, for example, is actually sort of a quote unquote best case scenario. Sometimes it takes six to seven years to get a property through that reserve right now which I'm sure we can appreciate in the world we live today, that's really not the best way to approach things if it ever really was. So thank you all for the time. Um, I really appreciate being here and having the opportunity to share this. Uh, we look forward to any way we might be able to help with you all in the future. Um, and uh, take care. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Quinn. I'm from the north side. So in a former meeting, uh, the question of the place of the public comment in the agenda was brought up. 
perhaps moving it later so folks could respond to what went on in the meeting and asking <clears throat> questions. And I would, since this is new to me and this is a cool new tool, I, I would love for the possibility um, to see the public comment moved later in the agenda. Thanks so much for your work. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, please. So you know the speaker will go to the actual uh, formal part of the agenda. I've already welcomed the new board member. That takes us to um, the administrator's report and Bethany talking about insurance procurement. Yes, thank you, Reverend Burgess. Um, as um, this board authorized the um, release, the engagement with an insurance advisor and subsequent release of a request for bids um, to three different brokerages for insurance of various levels for the organization. This would be the first time that the organization will, I can see that, will have secured this. Um, so an update on that from last month is that the um, an RFB is in fact out. Three brokerages were selected. This board um, raised the issue and wanted to make sure that it was both available. Um, to uh, meet our procurement standards and provide an ample opportunity for MNWBE respondents. Pleased to say we found, I think, a good set of brokerages to meet those needs. Um, expecting those bids to come back in between now and the May board meeting and so that the work of this board can continue um, as quickly as and um, efficiently as possible, would like to request of the board that instead of waiting until the May meeting to select and get under contract and begin underwriting, that um, the board considers authorizing the executive committee to make that um, determination, and then the full board could ratify it at its May or subsequent meeting, if in fact we're, we can make that decision before in the interim. Conversation. No conversation, then I'll retain a motion to empower the executive committee to make the decision in a contract and then have it ratified in the May meeting. Is there such a motion? So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay, thank you very much. That moves us to the um, approval. Thank you. I missed the approval. Sometimes once I, go out of, <laughs> once I go out of order, I'm done, right? I'm, you know, That's right, right? <laughs> I don't, you know. So um, I was going to make a breakfast analogy, right? That you know, if I don't, you know, drink my juice first, I'm going to eat ice cream and cake for breakfast. So anyway, um, um, I may eat ice cream and cake anyway for breakfast. I need a motion to approve the minutes have been given to you electronically. I need a motion to approve the minutes of uh, March meeting. Motion to approve the need March minutes. Need a second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. Takes us to, I believe, the financial report, Mr. Correct. Lager. Uh, the finance review, uh, Bethany, would you please run through that quickly? There's not much there. Certainly. Thank you. So in your packet, you have your standard um, financial reports, budget versus actual. Um, I'll just go again quickly through them. Your balance, the balance sheet um, of which at this point, um, current assets, the land bank has just over $450,000. And um, we have the chart of accounts, so you can just see another way how the budget breaks down, but really turning to the accounts payable, accounts receivable, and, and expenditures. So in February, um, the month of February, we actually didn't have any financial activity, so most of that got pushed into March. So there was actually quite a bit of expenditures in March, and you can see that on your final page of your report, expenditures year to date. Um, you'll see the number of expenditures that um, were approved under the administrator's authority, but then there are also several outstanding expenditures for this board to consider and approve. Um, the monthly administrator's fee for the URA and then um, a reimbursement of myself um, for event-related expenses <laughs> um, from last month. So fairly straightforward. If there are any questions, um, we continue. Um, I do provide monthly an update on anticipated expenditures for ne next month. And as we've seen, as activity and capacity has increased, more expenditures month over month. So instead of averaging $5,000, this board is now averaging anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 a month in expenditures. So as there may be cash on hand at current, we know that um, as activities increase, particularly as the inventory in and subsequent expenses increase, that cash will um, decrease more rapidly. 
So I will open it up for any questions. Okay, we have a motion to accept the financial review and the March expenditures approval. Need a second. Another conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers nay. That brings us to the audit. Uh, the audit is a separate item and uh, requires a motion to accept the audit. This is simply accepting it, is not approving it or saying in any way that you like it. Uh, it's a very short audit and it is very basic because we haven't spent that much money or done that much business mm -hmm. in the time period that it covers. Uh, I believe you have all gotten a copy of the audit electronically and had an opportunity to look at it. Are there any questions about the audit? Hearing none, is there a motion to accept the audit? You can make the motion. I can make the motion. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the audit. Need a second. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, there's a nay. We have accepted the model, the okay. audit. The model, Thank the you. Audit. All right, and the, we also want to direct the staff to submit to DCED. Yes. Which is which we're required to do. Yes, per the um, state legislation, there is a reporting requirement back to the state. There are additional reporting requirements. Actually, I think. Yeah. If Irene wants to go into those. Yeah, so now the audit does get submitted to the State Department of Economic and Community Development, DCED, and per our local ordinance and our policies and procedures, it is submitted to the city, it is submitted to the controller, and it's submitted to the county. So all it will be distributed to those three entities. Four the conversation entities. for... Irene, about this issue. If not, that takes us to the inventory report. Again, back to Bethany. Certainly, and, and I will actually also yeah. uh, turn the. <laughs> keep this it's a kind of a flow right. from the finance report and the audit acceptance. Um, want to just note that in your policies and procedures, there is our section on methods of accountability, and the last section under that is that every third year the annual audit and report shall be submitted to the city controller for an organizational audit. So again, that's every third year. We're in our third year. You just accept it in a report. We're going to go ahead and send it to the controller as we need to, and we're going to remind them that if they want to do their organizational audit, we welcome that. And that organizational audit um, includes beyond just the financial report um, so that the as the land bank is part of the, as a component unit of the city, so it gets folded into the CAFR, that could also include things like an audit of our in inventory. And of course, over the first three years, we didn't have an inventory to speak of, but there may be additional um, pieces of the organization that the controller's office would want to look at. So this would be the first time, since we are at the first three year mark, the first time that we would be going through that process. Okay. Yes. Um, so you know the conversation I want to now that we have we're back to our full complement um, of nine members I want yeah. to nine of us mm -hmm. nine members right I want to um, as the chair I want to ask and appoint Wanda Wilson as the uh, board member working with Bethany on the property reserve she has a background and expertise in working with the property reserve she has a sense of it, and I think we need to, the, the, the conversation with the property reserve has been a conversation with the uh, real estate department from the city, um, the URA, and my office, and the land bank, and I think that um, another member of the board participating in that process that will lead us, hopefully, over time to the land bank taking on all, dis, all dispensation of land which is, I think, the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is, is the property reserve is the first thing we take over from the city. But I think over time, the functions of the land bank and the real estate office, at least some of their functions, I think the land bank will wind up taking it um, over time. So if you do not mind, if you would represent us in that work, um, your expertise can be utilized and you will strengthen our work. Um, that takes us to the inventory management system. Uh, uh, through property reserve. Certainly. Um, 
Last month, we discussed with the board how the land bank, as it accumulates an inventory of property, has an obligation to make that information available to the general public. And, and our foundational documents articulate the different types of information, property address, um, other conditions, things like that, type of, of is it vacant land, is it residential, things like that. Um, in order to facilitate that, and that both needs to be in paper form available to the public, but also electronically. Um, simultaneous to the website um, overhaul that the communications committee is spearheading, there um, we staff reviewed at the direction of the board the existing property maintenance, excuse me, the existing property inventory systems that the city and the URA already use. Uh, and is making a recommendation to the board that we, as the URA just renewed their contract and under the agreement, the terms of the memorandum of agreement, which provides for during the land banks pilot activities to sort of piggyback or um, use some of the infrastructure that the Urban Redevelopment Authority has in place, that we um, become a subcontractor on their contract with the inventory management company called eProperty Plus which does provide an electronic, excuse me, a web-based interface for the general public. So I'm requesting authorization to enter into a contract with the URA, actually not with eProperty, with the URA um, as a subcontractor for 12 months to use this inventory, electronic inventory management system. And then we would fold that into the website um, in the next month as we work um, on bringing that into 2019. Conversation. See no conversation. I need a motion to contract with the URA to utilize their EP and data management system. So moved. A second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Who's there's a nay? That takes us to the property maintenance conversation. I think this is also me. <laughs> um, so similarly, as we move forward with the pilot activities and acquire an inventory of property. Not only do we need to make the data available, but this, the um, organization certainly has maintenance obligations. Um, not just what code requires, but the land bank has actually gone a step further um, in its policies and procedures and, and um, articulated a higher standard for itself, for the inventory that it, that it owns while it owns it. So in order to make sure that we can do that, we need third-party property maintenance service providers. Um, once again, um, so that we can be up and running, and since our inventory is unknown at this time um, and will grow in different ways, I'm also recommending that we participate in the URA's existing land care small business property maintenance contracts. Um, just for the, the remainder of their current contract year. So that would get us through this growing season, which is where the bulk of the property maintenance activities take place, through November. And that way, we can focus on the other businesses at hand um, for the land bank and make sure that we are meeting that obligation um, and then revisit it in the fall when we are a little further along. So the recommendation would be also that we authorize um, to execute a contract um, with the URA to use their property maintenance service providers. Conversation. See no conversation, I'll entertain a motion to contract the URA to utilize land care contractors through, from the URA from now until November 2019. Yep. Conversation. Mr. Lavelle. Once we um, acquire more property, Bethany, we would just add it to our bundle as we, as we currently do at the URA depending on where it's located throughout the city? Correct, so okay. Um, okay. both the URA, the URA already has an arrangement with the housing authority starting this year where it actually is maintaining some of the housing authority's land, so this is um, a partnership and actually leads to efficiencies um, both for public agencies as well as the service providers. Um, there, are, there are different bundles, but their, their existing contracts allow for the flexibility of the portfolio to grow and shrink, so that capacity, we had, the right. sort of due diligence was done that that capacity is already there okay. to add them to those contracts. That's all. Thank you. The other thing that's interesting um, is that the land tends to be concentrated, right? 
the URA land and the housing authority land and the land that we may acquire, because most of it's city land, not all of it, but it tends to be concentrated in certain neighborhoods in certain places. So when the URA is cutting um, its, its portfolio on a particular street, there's a high, high likelihood, you know, that in the future there's either housing authority or there is city or there will be land bank land real close to it. And, you know, it's a lot less expensive to just go and on the same day cut the second lot that's a block down the street than they send a whole crew out to go cut that lot individually on a separate day. Um, and that's what we found when we layered, I mean, just talking about our work, when we did the East End um, and did the um, land uses and all the, the neighborhoods we've done them in, you'll see, you'll see literally several government entities owning land in concentrated places on particular blocks. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. It's color, when you color code it, it's actually striking. Um, so anyway, um, I'll, I'll go back to entertain a motion to execute a contract with the URA to use their land care contractors. I know. Sorry, a quick addition. Um, the request is for a shall not exceed amount of $20,000. Yeah. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any other conversation? If not, all those in favor? Ms. I'd just like to make sure we revisit this by August just in case it expires and we don't have somebody to pick up mm -hmm. snow removal. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other conversation? See no conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposes nay. That takes us to Mr. Bay and the Communications Committee. But I thought I was up to date. Do we have a launch date yet? We're getting close. Um, the, per the contract, um, the and launch date would be mid-July or mid-June, excuse me. However, we're still on track, we think, to get it done a month early, so mid-May. So we're still looking for right around the time of next month's board meet act meeting, actually. And so the build-out is going nicely. We've tried to incorporate as many of the things that residents and people who've been making comments at the public comment section wanted in a website so that they can quickly stroll through. Uh, request properties uh, we have some these are from the, the these are uh, examples in your packet as to the way that people will be able to request properties inquire about properties see what's what's available um, and so it's it's coming along nicely said so we're a month ahead of schedule and we're hoping to have something to roll out next month thank you very much for that report any other conversation that needs to occur at this board meeting Ms. Uh, Senator Fontana Thank you. Uh, last meeting, some uh, bill uh, in uh, Representative DeLuca's bill was brought up, um, which we talked about uh, mortgage lenders uh, maintaining homes. So um, I just looked into it. And I thought I'd report that it's still it's out there, but it's in the House Urban Affairs Committee, uh, still sitting there. Unfortunately, the Senate did uh, pass along uh, two bills um, in the interim here. One. Uh, was a bill that amends the tax code and creates a, a Pennsylvania housing tax credit through PHFA. And certainly that's to give incentive to private investment to create new and uh, preserve existing affordable rent rental housing. Um, that bill uh, is, went to from the committee to the Senate Appropriations Committee and just bounced over. There was a second bill also that's been around a long time it establishes the Abandoned Property Tax Sale Act, and it provides a process for removing or transferring abandoned buildings within a municipality. The issue a lot of times is uh, if the tenant was in there, they leave, they leave property in there, how long does it take to dispose of that property? And it's this discussion's been going on since I've been in the Senate trying to get a balance for that to respect the tenants and their property left there and how long it should be. So uh, we're still at it. We're still. Uh, trying to find a happy medium there. But again, it did get passed through the uh, the Senate Housing and Urban uh, Committee, which I'm on, but it, now it's uh, referred to the Senate Appropriations Committee, and I'm not sure why. But there are some bills that are concerning what we do up there. Uh, they're just not making it uh, to the governor's desk at this point in time. So I just want to relay that. Thank you. Where are we with the request to see if about a second comment section? You were asked to think about what that looks like. Possibly. So, you can read it. Yeah, 
yes. I, um, I think it's possible. Um, I'm not so sure yet it's practical, but it's possible um, that, that the whole idea and, and all of that kind of did look at all the other agencies that I'm aware of um, in terms of city government, from city council to the URA to the housing authority to the water authority, and the, authority, the parking authority. I'm not sure about the water authority. We do it in front. But everyone that I've chatted with um, um, has do, does their public comment at the very beginning of the meeting. Uh, the other thing, though, is I think is true. We tend to be somewhat approachable, right? So even though the, we, it may not be on air, if members of the public want to engage us, right, I think we're very interested in engaging with the public. And that's number one. Number two, um, I think that um, 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 they can certainly set up meetings with us individually. But I think the third thing tool we have is the ability to hold public meetings that are just listening sessions. Uh, we did that when we did our policy and procedure documents and our organizing documents so that if it's an issue that needs extended community conversation, um, we can hold um, a community meeting or a public meeting either here or in the community that's just a listening meeting. So we can do it. I, I just haven't been persuaded yet. I think so. I mean, if the case is what's practical, I think it's more for a three minute session for someone to be able to throw it back out so that it's a part of the record seems more practical than holding it off. And I like the idea, I mean, the argument that, well, no one else does it is a non argument. Um, you know, we're talking about being different and we're talking about being more transparent and being, you know, these legacy organizations, you listed five organizations that don't work. Well, I don't know about that. I think the Housing Authority does. <laughs> I think we do okay, but. Well, but, the, but the point is, I think just for the sake of being more transparent and giving people a chance to weigh in as a part of the record, that we don't have to have a separate private meeting that right here we can throw that out and consider what people are thinking about. Green, if you would take a look if you don't know about the Right to Know Act and to see if there is any barriers or if not, let me know. We can go to our city uh, law department and find out yeah. if there's any and barriers. Essentially, my recommendation would be just to consider adding it, which is fine, but not replacing public comment in the Great. beginning because public comment has to be available before official action. That's basically what I was going to say. I, I'm on the Sports and Exhibition Authority. We have it before and after. But what the after is about what I think the young gentleman said, what was on the agenda today. You do have an after. Mm -hmm. Right. And before is about whatever. So you sort of put some restriction, I guess, on what you can, you know, address at that particular public and And for the public, it's not whatever if they have the desire to make comment on an agenda item that's exactly. been put on the agenda. Right. Um, and the after could be limited to what was discussed if you wanted to create that kind of boundary around it. Do me a favor, um, take a look at the Sports and Exhibition Authorities, uh, get a copy of their minutes, and, um, but the, um, and let me see, but, you know, see what it looks like so that we can um, um, figure out a way to embrace it. Right. I'm not it against it. It gives us a chance to be more, more yeah. reflective and. Yeah, that's fine. I have no, I'm not against it. I just need to see what that looks like and make sure we're not violating anything by doing it. As long as that's fine, um, we'll entertain a motion next meeting to do it. Any other conversation? I do have one additional thing, Chair. Um, pertaining to inventory, but also um, as Dr. Bay mentioned, there are a series of other draft forms and administrative policies. Now, these aren't organizational governance policies that the board would need to take action on. They're purely procedural. Um, you just, I've provided them for informational purposes in your packet so that you can see um, the types of ways, um, and I've been working very closely with Irene on the legal language and the uh, alignment with policies and procedures and legislation and whatnot. Um, we've actually, they are in draft form, and we've actually already received just in the last month to give you a sense of um, the increase in activity, a request to receive a donation, a request for investigation um, of a property that a private individual would like us to take, put, consider taking through treasurer sale, or consider acquiring, we would determine what the best path of acquisition is. Um, of course, we, ha we have to do due diligence, but we've received them. 
Um, we, for the first time, submitted an application or an information request to city real estate to tag properties um, that the land bank would be interested in for the August treasurer sale and about half of that list actually came from community groups so we are working with private individuals with community groups and we really are exploring as our strategic 12-month strategic plan indicated um, this year is really about testing the different forms and processes and just in the last month alone we have really expanded that footprint so wanted to both provide those draft forms that Irene and I have been working closely on developing and give you that update on activities any other conversation? Seeing no conversation, again, thank you very much for your time, interest, and gifts, and talents. We will entertain a motion. There's no new business to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Need a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Closures nay. We are adjourned. <laughs>